Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Gilligan, I'd like to add my congratulations and thanks for all your service, too. You've overseen tremendous changes and advancements in the use of our airspace and directed a lot of that, and we thank you for it. I hope we'll continue to see women involved at the top level of the FAA, and they'll have hard, big shoes to fill. Uh, you know, we've heard recently through an executive order that uh, it's kind of this two for one. A two for one sounds great for happy hour in my district, but I'm not sure it's a good way to run the FAA. We're going to uh, have to remove two regulations for every regulation established. I believe this is what the executive order that uh, President Trump signed. I wonder if you would comment on that. Is it going to affect the FAA? It's kind of wide open right now. We don't know who all is included, but it could be you. And how will that impact trying to maintain the most complex, largest, and safest airspace in the world? Uh, Congresswoman, we're still working with the Office of the Secretary and the Office of Management and Budget, along with most agencies around the government, to really flesh out um, exactly what the expectations are through the executive order. So we're not completely clear yet on exactly how it will be implemented. Uh, but we do know that a number of our rules, like Part 23, um, we are putting rules in place to reduce burden, to, in fact, uh, enable new technologies, for example, UAS. Um, so we believe a number of the uh, initiatives we have underway will fall within the expectations of the executive order. Uh, but again, the details are still being fleshed out, so we don't have a complete, um, we don't fully understand exactly how we'll implement it yet. It's, it's a little scary to think that you have to strike two rules uh, in order to create one new one, though, isn't it? Are you, aren't the rules that you put in place pretty... Uh, valid and helpful and you would don't want to just arbitrarily get rid of them? I, I would completely agree with you, but what we do see, as we saw with Part 23, for example, historically we tended to do very prescriptive rules. We, we told the manufacturer, for example, or the operator the specific technology or the specific thing they had to do. Uh, what we've learned with Part 23 is you can describe the outcome that we need the, it must perform this function or the aircraft must fly in this way. And that allows innovation um, and it enables uh, manufacturers, for example, to get product to market more quickly and as safe or safer than what we have in place now. So again, to the extent some of our new rules will have that kind of an approach, um, we believe that will fit the expectation uh, of, the, of the executive order. Can the industry comment on that? Um, from our standpoint, we are we realize it's a, a complex issue, and um, I, I applaud what the FAA did with Part 23. I don't think we we work under mainly Part 25 and Part 21, and I don't think the same approach to Part 25, where you kind of throw it all out and rewrite it, is really what we want. I think you want to, like a scalpel with a surgeon, go after some selected regulations, as Ms. Gilligan said about that are maybe a little bit more prescriptive or they're based on propeller technology that uh, we may want to go after and, and uh, change those a little bit. When do you think this directive will be flushed out that we'll know kind of what's expected of this two for one? Um, I, I don't know exactly. As hmm. I said, we are working with the Office of the Secretary and the Office of Management and Budget on that guidance now. Uh, so I would expect as soon as we have somebody ahead of that agency who might be able to get something done. I'm sorry? I, I, I'm, no. It was an aside. Oh, okay, thank you. I'll thank yield you. back.